This video is brought to you by Squarespace. It's my time of the year again to play through the Galaxy games. I've done top 10 several years ago of the hardest and easiest stars, but I'd love to look back and make a definitive version. Every star from easiest to hardest. So with that said, let's get her ranked. 121, The Star Festival. I think we all knew this was coming. After getting 120 stars with Mario and Luigi, you unlock one final galaxy. And all you do is get 100 purple coins, with literally no enemies or anything to worry about. It's a celebration star, so it's not meant to be hard. 120, Luigi on the Roof. The title says it all. Backflip and spin your way to Luigi and grab the power star. Truly riveting. 119, painting the planet yellow. I wouldn't really call it painting, but you'll definitely spot some yellow. You just step on all the switches and the star appears. Wow. 118, passing the swimming test. Talk to this big pengu, steal a golden shell from some kid, and then bring it back for the star. It is stupidly easy since spinning in the water gives you this big hitbox to snag the shell. 117, Surfing 101. The mission name is pretty self-explanatory. You'll race surf off some gnarly waves, and it's a fun time. There's the possibility of you falling off, but the course is so easy that it won't happen. 116, Grand Star Rescue. The very first star you'll get in the game. It teaches you how to move around and shake to attack enemies. You'll get a good grasp of how gravity works, as well as some basic puzzles. 115, Pull Star Path. One of the most relaxing yet lonely stars of them all. Sling through a bunch of pull stars to make your way through asteroids up until the very end. A bunch of platforms only appear when you get close to them, and you simply grab five silver stars. 114, Pull Star Path Speedrun. It's the same star, but on a four minute time limit. You might think that would add stress, but a lot of times the prankster comets only wish they did. I made a few mistakes and still finished with a minute and a half to spare. 113, Purple Coin Omelet. By far the easiest purple coin challenge. They're all lined up very nicely, and half of them are hanging out on launch stars. 112, The Golden Chomp. Fly around with a flower, grab the stars, and run into a golden chomper. As long as you grab all the question mark coins, you're basically set. 111, Rocky Road. Oh man, what an absolute treat this level is. By long jumping across the moving cookie platforms, you'll get to the star at the end. Something about the long jumps feels nice because you have to avoid all the pits, and you have so much control over Mario's speed and momentum. Chef's kiss. 110, Purple Coin Spacewalk. You collect all the coins and you can't see the ground in front of you. It sounds hard, but it isn't. If you take your time and figure out where the paths are, you'll get the coins with no issues. Even with the timer, there's not much of a rush. 109, Trouble on the Tower. After activating a weed with godlike strength, you'll destroy half a mountain and climb up a tower to fight the world's easiest boss. This mandibug goes down in one ground pound. That weak little bitch. 108, Shrinking Satellite. Hit the music notes while the ground disappears from behind you. This one is a little nerve wracking the first time you play it, but after that you get one of those, oh f yeah moments when it comes up again, because there's nothing better than making every block go away before grabbing the star. 107, Hurry, He's Hungry. This is virtually the same mission, except you have to feed a Luma 40 star bits to get there. And you also have to hit every tile like we did last time for funsies. 106, Dino Piranha, Good A Galaxy. It never fails to fill me with a sense of joy and wonder. After long jumping to this launch star and grabbing some star chips, you'll fight Dino Piranha, who is ridiculously easy. Run a little to the side and swing to the back to smack his tail. 105, Dino Piranha Speedrun. This is virtually the exact same star as the other one, although there's a darker vignette around the frame. Your time limit is four minutes, which is more than enough time. I generally finish around the two minute mark and that's with fooling around. 104, Gateway's Purple Coins. The moment you unlock the red star to fly around the Comet Observatory. You also have to get purple coins here, and uh, what the hell happened? You're not gonna rage quit or anything. I mean, there's virtually no enemies, but the camera, <laughs> it doesn't care. I completely forgot how awful it is on this one level. I mean, look at this. 103, a snack of cosmic proportions. This is the first time that feeding the Lumas are important as well as the pull stars. You fly to a bunch of planets and collect 100 star bits to feed the Luma. I've always liked this two planet where the gravity shifts depending on where Mario is. 102, watch your step. While I love how cool the idea for this level is, it's really boring. You're basically just waiting for the stage to move while you stand around doing nothing. It doesn't get all that interesting gameplay wise until the very end when you have to look ahead slightly. 101, Be Mario Takes Flight. 
The first thing Mario does with his new suit is tickle a stranger. Yeah, I've always found this Honey Queen scene super odd, but this is another easy mission. Flying off these big flowers is cool, and same with climbing the honey-filled walls. 100. Big Mouth's Gold Bait Swim to the golden shell, and use it to break open the golden treasure chest. There are booze in the water, and you'll have to break some bricks, but it's not all that hard to avoid them. 99. Treasure of the Pyramid After feeding this Luma, you're sent into a pyramid with bizarre sand physics. By hitting these switches on the top and bottom, the sand rises up and down, and you'll just collect all the silver stars to get the green star. 98. Rolling in the Clouds Be the golf ball. That is who we must be. After squishing Billboard for making me sit through the tutorial, asshole, you just kinda roll to the end and avoid the holes. It doesn't feel quite as intuitive as the race surfing, but it's still solid enough. 97. Yoshi's Unexpected Appearance Well, it is indeed unexpected. To get his planet, you need to feed this Luma 50 star bits. If you don't have enough, you can drop down into this glassy planet and grab the remaining ones, and it can be a little awkward to get back out, but otherwise you just jump on the Goombas here to get the star. 96. Luigi and the Honey Hive Kingdom Getting to Luigi this time is a little tougher than the mission itself. I might have done something wrong here, but I've always used B Mario to climb up this hill and use this ledge. It's not really hard, but it does take more effort than most saving Luigi stars. 95. King Caliente's Battle Fleet It's time to hit some nuts into other planets to smack this pokey silly. Did you guys know there's a mushroom in this box? Because I didn't, I've never hit it till now, but anyway, you're gonna play some Pong with King Caliente. And it's pretty easy, although the third phase adds lava bubbles that you have to weasel your way around. 94. Sunken Treasure Grab the star shards to launch yourself to the top of the island, and then you'll just climb your way up. The platforming is interesting since you'll hit these switches to make more appear, but funny enough you don't really need them if you know what you're doing. 93. Bunnies in the Wind Fly around on some flowers and catch the bunny at the end. This bunny likes to cheat and dive through bushes that you can't, so you kind of just chase him around until he gets tired. 92. Matter Splatter Mansion Hitting this stalagmite gives you this neat little mansion. It's not challenging to get through, but it is a lot of fun regardless. It's mostly an auto-scroller though, so you won't be tripping as many balls as you thought. 91. Big Bad Bugaboom The Bugabooms have invaded Honey Hive Kingdom, just like how Lanternflies invaded my f***ing house this year. You basically just fight Bugaboom, and while he's not that difficult, the timing can be a tad finicky. You have to ground pound him three times, and on the second and third phase he flies faster and even on the side. 90. Battle Rock Barrage God, this galaxy has such good music. This one is a bit of an auto-scroller too, in which you'll sit on a saucer needing to go from top to bottom to avoid balls and electric fences. At the end, you just guide a bullet build to the star's cage. While it's more involved, it's pretty straightforward. 89. Luigi Under the Saucer It's the exact same mission as Battle Rock Barrage, except we save Luigi. The only difference is Luigi is underneath the saucer, so it's a little more awkward to get to, but otherwise it's all the same. 88. Through the Poison Swamp This is a star that's more anxiety-driven than anything. Mario floats around in a bubble, and you simply push him around with some air. If you touch a spike ball over the poison, he's not gonna make it. When you have the groove, though, and feel comfortable grabbing this 1-up for literally no reason, it's a lot of fun. 87. Breaking into the Battle Rock This one has a lot of bob -um throwing. Blow up a bunch of cages and sling through this minefield with pull stars. I love how you can skip half of this room by just mashing the spin button, too. 86. Luigi and the Haunted Mansion Only Nintendo would make pumpkin Goombas that shit out fire. You go through a twisted castle, debate the booze, use Boo Mario for the first time, and that's about it. Nothing stands out here outside of saving Luigi for the first time. 85. The Secret Undersea Cavern After destroying the wall and myself with this shell, you unlock a secret cavern. I mean, I wouldn't call this place a cave, but it is a secret, I guess. There's harder versions of this stage, but you kind of just get to the end while avoiding the womps and thwomps. There are one hit KOs if you get squished, but the predictable patterns and overall slowness makes this one fairly simple. 84. Going after Guppy. Sharkman thinks he's hot stuff, so he makes you swim through eight rings. I was going so fast that I actually bumped into him at one point. That should tell you how much struggle there really is. 83. Star Bunnies on the Hunt. Find some star bits and chase down the bunny on a big spherical planet. You can use this switch to make walls to help out too if you want, but the most mystical part of this mission are these glass question mark blocks. They're so out of place and I don't think they exist anywhere else either. They're pretty nifty. 82. Gusty Garden's Gravity Scramble This sure is a scramble of places. You go from flying, to running on saucers, to a bunch of question mark blocks that change gravity with a flick of this arrow. 
81. Cataquack to the skies. Utilize a bunch of cataquacks that launch you into the air. The standout moment is this massive Jenga tower that nobody questions and apparently has been super glue tight. I guess they didn't want to lose their game or something, I don't know. 80. Mario meets Mario. He sure does, doesn't he? After collecting some star chips and getting some screwing done, you launch off to a massive 8-bit Mario place. You'll just grab the silver stars here with platforms that'll either rotate or disappear. 79. The Silver Stars of Sea Slide. This one honestly just takes a while. You go around the entire level and retrieve the Silver Stars. You'll need B-Mario for most of them too, so you have to stay out of the water, but even if you lose the suit, you can get it back pretty easily. 78. Purple Coins by the Seaside. One of the most boring stars to complete. You grab all 100 purple coins very slowly with B-Mario. There's not even any hidden ones, it just takes forever to grab them all. 77. Mega Legs Moon. You'll run up Mega Legs Leg while avoiding bullet bills, and then you need to break into the star. This can be a bit obtrusive since you need to guide the bullet bills to break the gates, but these wise guys like to run into each other or into Mega Leg himself. But it is super satisfying sneaking a bullet bill in for the Grand Star. 76. The Flip Switch Chain. After feeding Luma 50 star bits, you're sent to this QB2B -QB area to hit a bunch of switches. The tox boxes move pretty slowly, so you're not going to find much challenge here besides just being patient. 75. Fast Foes of Toy Time. It's the same star, but everything moves fast. Again, if you're patient when hitting all these switches, it isn't any harder. 74. Honey Hive Cosmic Mario Race. By far the easiest cosmic race in the game. You don't even need be Mario or anything fancy. Just some quick wall jumps and you'll beat the Cosmic Clone no questions asked. 73. Scaling the Sticky Wall. Combine climbing up walls and Manda Bugs, and that's basically this level. The honey moves around, making it a little harder to get up, plus getting hit by a Manda Bug is an Instazuck. 72. Camella's Airship Attack. Grab some Koopa Shells and chuck those mofos at Camella. What's cool about these is you have to manually aim your shot, adding a nice dose of challenge. 71. Tarantox's Tangled Web. After roaming inside this glass planet and getting all sticky in the sling pods, you'll land in Tarantox's nest. The idea is to get caught in a sling pod and smash through the spider's ass. You can also use a green toad to attack! Again, I never knew you could do this. But yeah, you'll hit the weak spots on the stomach and he's gone after two phases. 70. When it rains, it pours. As B Mario, you'll fly off a bunch of rain clouds and flowers to get to the end. This is a lot of fun considering you can skip big chunks of the stage if you really want to. There's also a boss at the end which I think wants you to hit some switch to reach him, but you can easily fly and break the glass Dr. Eggman style. 69. Giant Eel Outbreak. Three moderately sized eels are invading the waters, so we gotta hit them with some shells. The angles are a bit wonky, which makes it easy to miss if you weren't close, but with careful swimming, it's not much trouble taking out the eels. 68. The Floating Fortress. After blowing up this bomb, the level forms and you'll climb up to grab star bits. The only challenge is avoiding the bubbles, which isn't hard to do at all. 67. Top Maniac and the Topman Tribe. This is the first star where I'd say it gets a tad bit challenging. You have to take out a bunch of Topmen, these little spinner dudes, and after going through a gravity-defying obstacle course, you'll fight Top Maniac. He has spikes on the sides making him more deadly, but by jumping on top of him, you'll stun the Beyblade, allowing you to smack some sense into him. In the third phase, he brings up a couple Topmen to help, and if you don't take them out right away, they'll definitely get in your way and make your life harder. 66. Top Maniac's Daredevil Run. You don't even have to play the entire level over, it's just the boss. And he's not any harder, you just gotta do it without getting hit. I guess there's more tension given the circumstances, but otherwise it's the same difficulty. 65. Sunbaked Sandcastle. Here we have a star that has a lot of waiting. A tower goes up and down from these switches, and you can only get so many star bits at a time. So you'll wait around until you can grab them all, hit this pokey with a melon, and then you climb up a tower upside down while sand is rising to squish you. This is supposed to be a scary moment, but the sand is so slow that there's nothing to sweat over. 64. Choosing a favorite snack. If you consider Boo and B Mario snacks, then yes, that's what you're doing. I don't know why you wouldn't pick Boo Mario considering he has infinite flight, but yeah, you just kind of avoid the lights and the bubbles and you're good. There's also this star part that wants you to run laps to the middle, but you can just long jump your way across in a matter of seconds. 63. Sandblast Speedrun. This is one of those rare moments where a Comet Star is easier than the normal mission. As you can see, there are no enemies at the end, which is normally the main challenge. As long as you don't make too many mistakes, you'll get to the star with plenty of time left.
62. Blasting through the sand. There's two main sections in this one, grabbing these pull star bits through the fast moving sand in this time switch contraption. Unlike the speedrun version, this ending can be somewhat difficult if you aren't familiar with Mario's controls. The timer on the switch isn't very strict though, as long as you avoid the enemies, you should be fine. 61. Guppy in the Underground Lake. You go swimming with our shark bait. Hoo ha ha! He wants us to go through some rings, and it's not as hard as it sounds. We get access to the shell, making it seamless to swim underwater and get across. I usually chuck the shell before the last ring because it gets a little narrow. 60. The Bell in the Big Tree. Quite a well hidden star, I must say. By using this bubble, you smack this bell in a tree to activate some music notes. After getting back in the bubble, you grab them all and collect the star. 59. The Secret of Bowie Base. Ugh, another eargasmic song. Man, I missed Mario Galaxy. Guide Torpedo Ted to the cage to get to the pipe, and then you'll need to bring these bullet bills to the star. I got lucky and nabbed this on my first try, but it can be tricky to do because of all the obstacles in your way and the bullet bills' finicky nature. 58. Frosty Cosmic Mario Race. Ah, this is such an enjoyable race. I swear, like, every star in this game is a blast. You race Cosmic Mario while ice skating, and it's super thrilling building up speed with your jumps and trying to stay ahead of him. 57. King Caliente's Spicy Return. It's a refight with the King of Caliente, and they did make things spicier. The ground sinks into the lava if you stand on it for too long, so you're gonna have to jump for the duration of this fight. There's lava bubbles almost the entire time, plus meteors crashing all around. It's a lot to keep track of, but with a bit of practice, it's not too bad. 56. Underwater Cosmic Mario Race. As long as you swim through the rings with the shell, you're gonna beat him. Cosmic Mario does move pretty fast, but as long as you swim well, there won't be a problem. 55. Faster than a speeding penguin. This is extremely similar to the Cosmic Mario Race, except this time you're completing a full lap underwater. There's more things to avoid too, but otherwise it's not too shabby. 54. The Fiery Stronghold. Every time I enter this stage, the nostalgic Mario 64 remix hits right in the feels. This star is so much fun and contorts the level almost uncomfortably to make the gravity feel more dangerous. The Bowser fight is another involved one, but it's not that challenging. He'll breathe fireballs and stomp laser circle thingies, but after you lead him to a molten core and burn his booty, his radio is basically over. 53. Darkness on the Horizon. A very similar stage in Bowser fight compared to the previous one. I'd say the stage is easier because of how slowly these platforms move since you're given so much time to line up to the right spot, but the Bowser fight is slightly harder as he does some crazy punches on top of his other attacks. 52. Star Bunnies in the Snow. Assuming you know where the bunnies are, the timer is way too generous. It is interesting how this is the only level where you can use the cursor to move snow out of the way so Mario can run around faster, but otherwise you just find three bunnies. They took a lot of elements from the game and mixed them together nicely. 51. Beware of Bouldergeist, one of the more infamous boss battles. After slinging Bomboos around and going through this weird spear contraption, you fight the Mad Lad himself. His patterns are pretty easy to figure out. The challenge is hitting him with Bomboos. As long as you're paying attention, you'll eventually get the swing of things and knock him out. 50. Bouldergeist Daredevil Run. Once again, you just fight the boss without getting hit and don't play the stage. This might actually have been challenging if you had to go through the level too, but the patterns are still slow and predictable. 49. Battle Rock's Garbage Dump. We all knew this was coming sooner or later, blowing up some garbage with the world's most delayed bobbooms. While this is the easier one and I'm super experienced, there's no denying how frustrating this star can be if you don't understand the bobbooms' blast radius. These golden chips point out where you should throw, and as long as you're close and are well versed with the throwing, you'll be dandy. 48. Heavy Metal Mecha Bowser. You destroy a robot. That's awesome. The main gimmick is Mario becoming a screwdriver, undoing and finishing bowls to get through the stage. It gets a little difficult with Spring Mario, but that's about it. 47. Bouncing down Cake Lane. It's a lot more bouncing. This time you bounce off a bunch of walls and a cake with cuts in it. This mission has a lot of neat ideas, like blowing out candles with your fist and fighting the boss on a spring. I remember struggling with this boss, but he's really not that bad if you're decent at aiming the high spring jumps. 46. Gizmos, Gears, and Gadgets. It's ball rolling time, and the level is way tougher than that other one. There's bob ohms that can send you flying, narrow paths, gears that spin. It's a hammy. The hardest part is at the end where you need to balance on this tiny die without falling off. Thankfully, the motion controls are responsive enough where if you take your time, you can do this with a few attempts at it. 
45. Revenge of the Tottenham Tribe. The boss isn't even the hardest part. This pull section with the fast moving cannonballs do not play around. If you aren't swinging Mario around to avoid the blast, then you're getting clobbered. As for Top Maniac, well, I guess it's harder. The main difference is fighting Top Men for each phase, and there's also less electric fences. But really, these things just add time and not challenge. 44. Topman Tribe Speedrun You'd think this might be harder, but it's virtually the exact same star outside of a few extra enemies here and there. The timer gives you six freaking minutes. Why is it this generous? Literally anyone could finish this in that time. It's not that long of a level. 43. The Frozen Peak of Baron Burr a lot of ice flower usage. Most of the challenge is getting across before the flower timer runs out. It's not very hard. Even Baron Burr is a simple boss. You just need to jump and spin as he's coming down to freeze you. Definitely one of the more forgotten about galaxy bosses, and probably because he doesn't put up much of a fight. 42. Burning Tide. With 80 star bits, feed the Luma, and you're sent to some random volcano planet with five silver stars waiting to be grabbed. The lava rises up and down pretty frequently, but you're given a lot of time to prepare for that. 41. Wall Jumping Up Waterfalls By taking a shell to this treasure chest, you'll unlock a hidden mission. This one is really creative, as you'll use Ice Mario to wall jump up these waterfalls. This just looks so neat, and it's somewhat challenging too since you're on Ice Mario's timer. The ending is one of those things where you'll get it on the first try like I did, or the Cataquack will be dumb and not follow you right away. 40. Hot and Cold Collide The main challenge is to carry Fire Mario over to an icy stage of the level. This isn't terribly hard if you take your time. The ice and lava go up and down, so you just need to watch that and you should be solid. And following that is a fun ice skating over lava section. 39. Bullet Bill on your back One of the harder missions to find. You have to ground pound the stump and hit all the music notes to spawn the launch star. And this takes us to a fairly irritating segment, guiding a Bullet Bill to break the cage star. You have to go back and forth to bring the land up and down, and every time you get a Bullet Bill chasing you, it hits some other cage nearby or the ground. Once you clear out all the cages, it's not that bad, but my god. 38. Boo in a Box When going into Deep Dark Galaxy, you swim to the bottom and hunk a green shell on one of these bombs. This blows up the ship, and you're taken to a box with a boo in it. This is a neat little room, considering you have to keep hitting this arrow until you can bust open a window of light to knock the star out of the boo. 37. The Underground Ghost Ship We've got some more Fire Mario action. He lights up some torches to access the other part of the stage. Underneath all the water is a hidden ghost ship, which has another camelophyte. This one is a lot harder because of the extra camix, less space, and more fireballs to avoid. It's easy to get hit at least once or twice no matter what you do. This fight can be unpredictable. 36. Freeze Flames Blistering Core This is a nice and meaty mission. You'll start by ice skating for star bits, lighting torches with Mario's fireballs, and making your way around the lava. There's a lot to do, and it's all quite engaging. 35. Bubble Blast Off It's a lot more than bubble blowing, let me tell you. You have to hit this mole with some balls, light the torches again to get the ice flower, and make your way on top with some bubbles. The ending is pretty nifty since you ground pound these tennis balls to grow a watermelon. That makes sense. 34. The Dirty Tricks of Major Burrows After ground pounding a bunch of burrows and climbing a caterpillar that keeps eating floating apples, you take on Major Burrows. The final phase can be tricky to time if you're not used to the game. You have to not only ground pound twice close to him without getting hit, but you need to spin attack with him as well. While I'm personally familiar with the timing nowadays, I remember this boss being irritating like 12 years ago when I was just getting back into Mario games again. 33. Major Burrow's Daredevil Run Wow, another no-hit challenge. I don't know what I'm supposed to add. You already know how these stars go. 32. The Sinking Lava Spire You're jumping near a bunch of lava, and it's got this badass shot of Mario flying towards the camera while the volcano explodes. The hardest part is the end, since you need to climb up the spire quickly, or you'll get burned to smithereens. 31. Soaring on the Desert Winds Mario confirms he has no bones and goes all helicopter off these tornadoes. This is another lengthy mission, and it is a pain in the butt when you mess up your jumps and have to take this launch star and tornado again. 30. Infiltrating the Dreadnought The overall platforming is kicked up a notch at this point. This one has a lot of places where you can die instantly. I really like how you have to guide this bullet bill to the water spout to add water and raise a bunch of platforms. 29. Through the Meteor Storm The little cinder comes to good use lighting these torches for us. That's pretty clever, actually. After that, you get some star bits and take on this rolling ball segment. This isn't too bad, but you really need to be careful of your jump since the ball doesn't handle slants very well. 28. Cosmic Mario Forest Race One of the harder Cosmic Mario stars. You'll race in Gold Leaf Galaxy, and he takes a couple of shortcuts of his own. As long as you keep up and do more long jumps than him, you'll probably be fine. 
27, Purple Coins in the Desert. Here we've got a somewhat challenging Purple Coin mission. It's fairly slow going and some of the coins are in hard to reach spots, but a lot of them just require the tornado, which means it takes forever to finish. 26, Purple Coins on the Battlefield. These coins can be tough to collect if you aren't keeping up with the saucer. The ones on the sides and in the air can be annoying to grab, but most of them aren't too much trouble. 25, the Electric Labyrinth. There's six different segments. The first five need to be done without getting hit or you have to start all over again. But most of them aren't that bad if you take your time. The last part is a different story. Tons of bullet bills chase you down, so you need to quickly move to the star. It can be a bit intense at the end. 24, Fast Foes on the Cyclone Stone. It's the same cavern from earlier, but everything moves a lot faster. If you haven't done it before, it can be tough and terrifying to get across without turning into a pancake. I find it kind of hard, but you know, I've played this level in the game like a thousand times, so I already knew what to do. 23, Dreadnought's Colossal Cannons. Not only are there cannons, but there's wonky controls as well. As you move across the level, you'll start to flip to the side and upside down, which changes how you move. This alone makes the level difficult. It can be hard to tell which direction to go in without falling off. 22, Kingfin's Fearsome Waters. By far the most fun boss fight in the game. Even more than Bowser's, if I'm being honest. First off, Kingfin is actually intimidating. Just look at that terrifying creepy grin. This battle takes place in a small body of water, which already creates a claustrophobic feeling, and you have to hit him with the shells. It gets harder and harder since he sends out little minions, so you have to take them into account while watching your breath meter and still hitting Kingfin. It's one of the best water-based bosses I've ever played. 21, a very sticky situation. This star isn't all that hard, it's just annoying. Sling pods are not the most friendly contraptions. There's a reason they didn't come back in Galaxy 2. You have to fling yourself to the star and some of the angles are super deceptive. It looks like you're aiming correctly, but instead you barely miss and have to try again. 20, the galaxy's greatest wave. This is one of the few stars that I hate doing, and it's mostly because of how tight the turns are and how wavy the waves are. Falling off just feels painful because that means you're putting up with the stupid waves yet again. 19, sinking the airships. This star probably isn't that high up for you, but man, I really struggle with this boss for some reason. With a few cannon shots, you'll start to fight Bowser Jr. on his airship, and he attacks with cannonballs and bullet bills, so it's nothing new. But damn, do I get hit a lot. I don't even know why, maybe I'm just impatient with this boss. 18, the fate of the universe, the final boss in Mario Galaxy, quite possibly the most epic one to ever happen in a Mario game. Bowser creates a black hole that kills everything, but the black hole explodes and the universe comes back anew. It's a powerful and memorable ending to a game, just in general. As for the stage, it's one of the harder ones, which makes sense being the final level. A lot of the sections have wonky camera angles and loads of enemies to avoid. Fighting Bowser isn't all that hard still, but at least it's cool as hell. The music sells the scene perfectly. You keep going from spear to spear, fighting Bowser in different ways, and the opera kicks in once you start smacking him around. 17, conquering the summit. After pulling off a triple jump and launching to a hidden part of the galaxy, you have to climb all the way to the top. There's a ton of enemies and bumps in your way. The ice bats in particular can be quite feisty. The only reason you feel rushed is because you need Fire Mario's fireball to take out the snowmen in your way. That's what really makes this one difficult. 16, red hot purple coins. Getting the purple coins here is on the trickier side, considering there's lava covering like 96% of the stage. There's not really any hidden ones, thankfully, just a handful that are stuck on tiny platforms. 15, Ghost Ship Daredevil Run. One of the few bosses where only getting hit once is a problem. The second phase is particularly terrifying when you've got two Kamiks and Camella chucking fireballs at you. Taking the Kamiks out early helps, obviously, but sometimes the cards just aren't in your favor and you'll get screwed over regardless of what you do. 14, Plunder the Purple Coins. Get ready for the wave of Purple Coin Stars to roll in. This one is just awful for one reason. It is so, so easy to misplace one or two coins and have no idea where to look after that. They're spread out and hidden so well that it'll take you ages to finish. 13, Purple Coins in the Woods. Another Purple Coin mission on a timer. I remember thinking that this was one of the hardest stars back in the day, and even now I still kinda believe that. Like I've said already, I've played this game so much that I managed to finish this with under a minute left, but I really had to play well to have that much time left. 12, a very spooky sprint. It's time to race the ghost fellow with pole stars. This actually gets a little challenging if you aren't moving fast with the pole stars. He's not super fast in this particular race, but you still need to schmoove to get the prize. 
11. Racing the Spooky Speedster It's another race, this one being slightly tougher. You'll play as Boo Mario this time, phasing through walls trying to get ahead of Boo. If you bump into a wall, you come to a complete stop, which is super annoying. And if you do that too much, he'll pass you guilt-free. Yeah, ghosts don't have any guilt. I, I heard that from the last one I talked to. 10. Luigi's Purple Coins One of the more infamous purple coin levels. You got 3 minutes to get 100 of the 150 coins. The stage is more deadly than before, and you'll need to do long jumps and spin jumps to get a lot of the coins. It can be quite difficult the first time, and even now it's still challenging. You'll be on your toes the entire way through. 9. Fiery Dino Piranha I imagine this is a bit of a controversial choice, but this final boss is such a stark contrast to the original. First, you have to get through a tough level by killing a bunch of Lil Cinders and jumping across these weirdly rotating platforms, and at the dino, you can only hit his tail when it isn't on fire. This guy is a really big fan of giving you an opening when you aren't close to his tail. And even then, the fire trail he leaves behind can hurt you. Hitting his tail is a pain in the ass. 8. Dreadnought's Garbage Dump Some people have gotten really good at these garbage dump stages, claiming them as one of the easier stars. While I kind of agree because we still have the golden markers for help, it always comes down to the last second or two. So even still, you can't really make any mistakes at all to beat this. 7. Lava Spire Daredevil Run Man, the absolute suffering when you die at the end of this from choking. This is a pretty long mission, and having to do it without getting hit puts you on the edge, especially when you get to the end. You know that you're able to do it, but because of the rising lava and tricky platforms, you get the nervous bug sitting in the back of your head and oop, I missed the wall jump, f*** my life. 6. The Honey Hive's Purple Coins Ah yes, the purple coin challenges that like to be super cryptic and force backtracking. About 80-85% to 85 of the coins are easy to get, but there are a handful that are super well hidden. Like this one on top of this mountain. The camera pans around and wow, two random blocks with purple coins. I honestly love how much exploring is required to find all these coins. It really makes you appreciate the level design that much more. 5. Beachcombing for Purple Coins This is a lot like Honey Hive Galaxy, but you also have to deal with water. There's a handful of coins in tricky spots, and you just need to do a lot of exploring to grab them all. 4. Purple Coins on the Summit Guess what you do for this one? Like the other two I just talked about, there's a lot of well-hidden coins to find here. And some of these are pure evil, like right behind this slope that nobody would ever think to look at. It's more difficult simply because you're running on ice the entire time. It always feels like you're gonna slip up somewhere. 3. Purple Coins in the Bone Pen I used to think this was the hardest star in the game, and while I don't agree with that take anymore, it's still a tough one. You have 1 minute to get 100 purple coins, and you need to book it to get that many coins in such a short time period. You can make a couple small mistakes, but not more than that. What I hate is that the timer still runs when the star is out in the open, so you have to pray that you're close to it and have enough time left. 2. Purple Coins on the Puzzle Cube It's easy to forget how tight the timing is with this one too. There's 150 purple coins here like in the Bone Pen, but they are way more spread out and much harder to access under the time limit. You need to be super optimized and know exactly where the star is going to spawn to make it on time. 1. Battle Station's Purple Coins I despise this level so much. It's already hard because of the gravity changing, but here you gotta get all the purple coins in one clean run. And they do not put them in easy spots. You need to get ahead of the auto-scroller a couple times to get through this. It is one of, if not the toughest stars to beat in Super Mario Galaxy. Add Squarespace Galaxy Yeah, this level is easily forgotten about, maybe because of how different its uses are compared to the rest. I'm sure you've heard of them before. They're the best and most powerful place to create the slickest websites online. You can connect your audience and generate revenue through gated members-only content, manage members, send emails, and leverage audience insight all on one easy-to-use platform. You can make a community on your website with a fully integrated commenting system that supports threaded comments, replies, and likes. Use their blogging tools to categorize, share, and schedule your posts too. And that's not even including Squarespace Extensions, a new third-party tool that lets you manage inventory, promote products, streamline bookkeeping, reconcile and file sales tax, and ship items across the globe. So check out squarespace.com slash Nathaniel and get two weeks and get 10% off your first purchase. Thanks to Squarespace for helping fund Bandy's universe. Man, I love playing this game every year. It's remarkable how well it's still aged. I wonder what I'll do for it next year. But anyway, while I think about that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll speak with you soon.